Carbon and macromolecules. Now the chemistry of carbon, anything that is alive is called organic and contains carbon. That's why it's organic. Now this is not the same as organic fruit, organic meat, etc. Now carbon has four valence electrons. So on the outside of carbon, there are four electrons that can bond with many elements such as hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, and nitrogen to form the molecules of life. So when we say organic, we're talking about life and we're talking about things that contain carbon. Now carbon is extremely versatile. Now that means there's lots of things it can do. Carbon can bond to one another forming single, double, or triple bonds. And the bond between carbon and another carbon is extremely strong. Now carbon can form many complex structures and can also form chains almost unlimited in length. So carbon is very special and can do a lot, a lot of amazing things. So let's talk about monomers and polymers. So right here we have monomers and you can compare this to Legos if you would like. Mono meaning one. So here we have three separate Legos that are not bonded together. And then here we have three Legos that have been bonded together. Now this is what we call a polymer because there's more than one. And down here we have five monomers and that's a polymer of five monomers. One, two, three, four, five. So poly meaning many, mono meaning one. So we're going to come back to this. So carbohydrates and simple sugars. Now carbohydrates are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. If it has those three elements, it is a carbohydrate. Now carbohydrates are used for energy. They're fuel for the body. And in plants, it's used for structure. Now carbohydrates can break down into glucose, which is sugar, to be used right away for energy. Many organisms can store extra sugar as complex carbohydrates called starches. Now a starch is a polymer, so here we have the word poly, so we know there's more than one Lego here, and it's made of monomers. So the monomers that make up starches are sugar molecules, and these sugar molecules are monomers that are bonded together to become polymers. Now monosaccharides are single sugar molecules, because saccharide meaning sugar, mono meaning one. Now these include glucose, galactose, which is a component in milk, fructose, which is found in fruit. Table sugar called sucrose, which is glucose and fructose combined together, is a disaccharide. Saccharide meaning sugar, di meaning two. And it's a compound by adding two simple sugars together. So you take these two simple sugars, glucose and fructose, you combine them together and you're going to get a disaccharide. All right, complex carbohydrates. Now, the large macromolecules, macro meaning large, so you take these large molecules formed from monosaccharides are called polysaccharides, meaning many saccharides. So many animals store extra sugar in a polysaccharide called glycogen. Now when glucose in your blood runs low, glycogen is broken down and glucose is released to bring your blood sugar back up. Now this supplies energy for contraction of muscles which allows for movement. Animals store extra sugar in what is called glycogen, but plants form two polysaccharides to store sugar, starch and cellulose. Now the cellulose fibers are made to give plants their strength and structure. And cellulose is a major component of wood and paper. And you're literally writing on cellulose right now. Now it's not 100% pure cellulose, but there's cellulose in that paper. Let's talk about lipids. Now lipids are composed of carbon and hydrogen atoms. There are a large and variety, uh, varied group of biological molecules that are usually not soluble in water. But the key thing here is that it has carbon and it has hydrogen. Those are the two things. So if it has those two things, it's a lipid. Now, lipids can be used to store energy and some lipids are important parts of biological membranes and waterproof coverings. Now, steroids like hormones are lipids and they're used as chemical messengers. Now, lipids are fats such as fats, oils and waxes. You may have noticed uh, if you do any cooking when you're trying to wash a pan out that's you where you have used oil, it's very hard to get it out because that oil and water do not mix. Now saturated fat and unsaturated fat, you've seen these on food labels. Well saturated fat is if each carbon atom, and we talked about this right up here because lipids are composed of carbon and hydrogen, if each carbon atom is joined to another carbon atom by a single bond the lipid is said to be saturated. And this is because it contains the maximum number of hydrogen atoms. Now, if it's unsaturated, if you have at least one carbon atom joined to another carbon atom by a double bond, the lipid is said to be unsaturated. If there is 
more than one double bond, then it's called polyunsaturated, poly meaning many. So you've seen these on food labels. So next time when you look at a food label and you see saturated and unsaturated fat, you'll know where it comes from. Now, nucleic acids. Now, macromolecules containing hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and phosphorus. So if you see something that contains hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and phosphorus, you know it's a nucleic acid. Now, nucleic acids are polymers, meaning more than one monomer, made from monomers called nucleotides. So these nucleotides are monomers. The nucleic acids are polymers. So the nucleotides make up the nucleic acids. Now, the nucleotides consist of three parts, a five-carbon sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogen base. Now, nucleotides play an important role in transforming energy, and it's called ATP. And when we talk about ATP, adenosine triphosphate, we simply mean energy. Now, nucleic acids store and transmit hereditary or genetic information. These are known as RNA and DNA. RNA contains ribose, while DNA contains deoxyribose. Proteins, the last macromolecule. So, proteins, macromolecules that contain nitrogen as well as carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So, these are the four atoms that make up a protein. If it has nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, it's a protein. Now, proteins are polymers meaning more than one monomer, made of monomers called amino acids. So amino acids are monomers, and when they come together, they form polymers called proteins. And amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. Amino acids are linked together by covalent bonds called a peptide bond, bond that form polypeptides. We'll talk about what that means in a minute. Now, proteins are built from one or more polypeptides. Well, what do proteins do? Well, some proteins regulate the cell process and control the rate of reactions. Others form cellular structures. Some others transport substances in or out of the cells. So there's lots of things that proteins do. And some others even help fight disease. So proteins have more than just one role. A lot of people, when they see proteins, they think about building muscle. Protein does a lot more than that. Now, the structure and function of proteins and their organization. So, there are more than 20 different amino acids, which are the monomers that make up the polymers called proteins, and more than 20 different amino acids can be found in nature. All amino acids are identical, where they can be joined to others by covalent bonds. Now, because they are the same, this allows any amino acid to bond to any other amino acid. Amino acids are assembled in the polypeptide chains, and remember we said those are proteins according to the code in the DNA. Now, because proteins are such large molecules called macromolecules, scientists have defined four levels of structure. The first one is the primary structure, primary meaning first, which is the sequence of amino acids. The secondary structure, the folding or coiling of the polypeptide chain, which is the protein. The tertiary structure, which is a complete 3D arrangement of the change. And then the fourth structure, found only in proteins with more than one chain. So here we have polypeptide chains, which is just a fancy way of saying how the proteins are made, how they are assembled. Now, proteins are shaped by a variety of forces, ionic and covalent bonds, the van der Waals forces, and hydrogen bonds. And protein shape is important, but that is for next time. If you have any questions, please write them down and bring them to class. If you're not in my class, you can always Shoot me an email and uh, ask a question or post a comment below. Uh, we'll see you guys next time.